All right, it's 11 a.m. Sunday morning. One week till Easter, eh? Happy early Easter, everybody. But uh, today we're doing weed control. I'm uh, Trevor Cameron here at Sunnyside, our general manager, Sahad and Nicole. She's in the background there answering your questions and keeping me on task. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> um, I would say a couple of things before we get started. Uh, we have a small windstorm here this morning. Uh, it's not a tornado, not a hurricane. You probably will hear some noise above my head. Unless I jump up and run, that means the roof is still up. But I apologize for the background noise. So I can hear the, the plastic flapping here today. Um, everybody hopefully had access to the handout. We've got it on our website. Uh, you can certainly email after the class. I can email a copy, but it was uh, right there on our website for you to download. Hopefully it'll give you just a little bit of kind of information, some vocabulary, some basics on weed control, and certainly has the products on there that we'll be talking about today. Um, I'm gonna go through, talk about a few things and then show you some slides of some of my most common weeds I see in my yard here in Everett, um, and kind of talk about how we would control them here as we head into springtime. Um, I'll give you a couple of disclaimers here before we start, like I tend to do at most classes, but uh, today there's a couple of big ones. Um, a Weeds are the perfect example of one gardener's trash and other gardener's treasure. So if you like your clover in your lawn and you like planting vetch and you like this and you like that, more power to you. This isn't to tell you what you need to go kill and, and what you don't need to kill in your yard. So it's totally up to you. I'm going to talk in a lot of generalities, certainly bring up some things that I don't want getting started in my yard. You may like them, more power to you. So I'm not trying to say kill the clover, kill the bees, eliminate this. Um, you can get as OCD as you would like with weed control. So we'll go through and uh, give you a couple options. Um, number two, um, I am the probably the biggest anti-weed and feed guy that exists on planet Earth these days. So we don't carry weed and feeds here at Sunnyside. Um, I will just say this. I think if you're going to go the chemical route, especially in lawns, get a spray and spot spray. If you buy weed and feed, you're broadcasting that over your entire property. That means chemical in the soil, the groundwater, the stream, the river, the sound, the ocean. So I'm going to try to talk you out of using weed and feeds, period. If you need to use chemical spot spraying, much safer. You can just spray what you need and not broadcast that murder, death, kill over your entire property. So that's, that's disclaimer number two. Um, disclaimer number three is I'm not a huge pre-emergent guy. Um, I'll show you some corn gluten today. Um, that's one that I do use in spring and sometimes fall in my own garden. It's a great natural organic option um, as far as pre-emergent. But I, again, at Sunnyside here, no preen, no maize, no casserole, um, none of those chemical type herbicides. I think that's a huge issue, um, A, on gravel, on anywhere in your property. Again, if you choose to go that route, use them safely according to the bag, but that's not something I'm going to spend a lot of time on the day here because it's it's something we don't do as well, okay? <clears throat> so if, as we go through uh, the handout here, if you've got it, we'll kind of go through a few terms uh, that we're going to talk about because we're going to mention a lot of different products and you should spray this with that and this with that. Hopefully this will kind of get you uh, some basic vocabulary. So uh, pre-emergent is is one I just mentioned real briefly, and that means, in essence, I'm, a, I'm applying a herbicide or a weed control product that is going to keep the weed from growing in the first place. So if you have a area that you've weeded, uh, cleaned out, and it's weed free, a, a pre-emergent may be an option. We have to be real careful with pre-emergence. Seeds don't grow through it. Sometimes bulbs will struggle through the chemical type pre-emergence. But as long as we use a good pre-emergent, you're okay. Corn gluten is the one that we do carry. It is natural. It breaks down on a fertilizer. It's got no chemical. Uh, but again, I can't go put that on my lawn right now and then overseed. The seed won't grow. I need to make sure that that uh, we have a, a, a chance for the seed to germinate. Typical pre-emergence, um, if you've got a package of one or you purchase it somewhere else, will tell you how long it will last or how long you've got to worry about for seed germination. Corn gluten is typically three months. So as long as we do that, we can wait three months to do whatever we like at that point, okay? Post-emergent is the second word on there. So that would mean I have a little dandelion growing in my garden and I would like to apply a weed control product to kill it. It's already growing. I'm using a post-emergent type weed killer. 
So that's something I, I can apply right onto the foliage, activates to the root system, hopefully kills the whole thing, uh, roots and all. Uh, a big part of this I'm hoping you'll consider as you're looking in your yard, obviously you care because you're at the class today and you'd like to control some weeds. So as you walk around, think of these different things. The, 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 the big thing here is selective and non-selective. A lot of folks come here long class, different classes during the course of the year, and it's hard sometimes to grasp, you know, why can I apply this herbicide on my lawn and not hurt my grass, but I kill everything else. So that's when we get into the selective weed killers. Really in the entire earth, when it comes down to, there's really two main groups of plants. When I grow from a seed, I have one leaf or I have two leaves. All the grasses are, are what we call monocots. They have one seed leaf when they grow. Pretty much everything else on earth has got two. So when I use a selective weed killer, I'm able to kill dicots or two seed leaves, weeds, brush, whatever, and not hurt turf. I wanna make sure that's clear. So we have very specific things that are safe to use on lawn, synthetic, chemical, and natural, that won't hurt your grass, uh, but would kill everything else, that, or the majority of everything else that you're trying to get rid of. Non-selective is a, is a term that would kill everything. Grasses, weeds, doesn't matter what it is. I'm gonna kill anything that product touches. So maybe in driveways, gravel areas, I wanna clear a bed before I go back and replant it. We would get something that's non-selective that would kill all types of weeds, grasses, annual, perennial, anything it touches. So we have to be very careful uh, when you're applying things like non-selective. I don't wanna get that on my peony, my rhododendron, things I wanna keep in my garden or I will have uh, herbicide damage for sure, okay? The next ones you'll see there, organic, natural versus synthetic or chemical. It's as easy as it sounds. You know, for me, I choose to kind of go the organic natural route. It's not like I've never used glyphosate or brush killer or anything like that in my life but I try not to unless I really have to do it. Um, we have some good options. There goes the wind. For a natural, for a natural type non-selective killers, you would come down and get something like botanical cleanup or burnout. Those will kill most any grass or weed that we want to spray in our yard, but I'm not using chemicals, systemic, glyphosate, all the rest. Um, at this point right now, I'm going to be real honest at Sunnyside, those are the only non-selective weed killers we have to offer is natural botanical cleanup and burnout. Those are both natural products, clove oil, caprylic acid, things that yes, will kill plants, but are non-chemical based. So they're not going to be systemic or ruin my soil, my garden, uh, the rest of it. So um, we'll be looking for something that's safer. Uh, glyphosate Roundup is the, the common thing you see around. It's sold in a number of different brands. We do not carry that anymore. Um, I think there's huge, frankly, cancer issues with a lot of the systemic type weed killers that have, we have used for a number of decades. Now they're going to be banned off the market and hopefully we'll come up with something that is safe down the road. Um, if we look at the next section there, just some simple areas. You know, again, I mentioned lawns. I want to treat my lawn. If I can do that here in the spring, get ahead of the weeds before they go to seed, I'm going to have a nice lawn with not a lot of work to do as we get towards summer. If I don't do anything about it, I let everything go to seed, I might have 10 now. I've got 100 in a month and I've got 1,000 in three months as these things seed and regerminate. So get a, get a head start on it here in spring. I mentioned again the selective weed killer in a lawn area. I can apply those products and not hurt my grass. So I want to make sure you get a good selective product. You'll see a few listed there. Uh, something organic, it's what I use at my house, is Weed Beater FE. We have it in the store. It's a great natural iron-based weed killer. It won't hurt grass at all. It actually kills some moss too, to be honest with you. But I can walk around with that and spot spray here and there and get death of the majority of weeds. I, I don't have the best luck with clover or oxalis, which I'll show you in the slideshow. But pretty much everything else, I've had really good luck using that Weed Beater FE. If I go the synthetic or chemical route, I've got quite a, beef, quite a few options. Weed Beater Ultra, Sed Gender. To be honest with you, it sounds funny, but Brush Killer. You know, Brush Killer is a product that will take care of a lot of really hard weeds, buttercup, horsetail, things that you may have in your grass without hurting the turf. It sounds funny, but right on the label, if you look real close, will not harm turf grass. You gotta, you gotta read the fine print. Um, and again, 
I mentioned I don't like weed and feeds. Yes, I'm probably not going to go home and spray my whole property with brush killer. But if I'm fighting horsetail or buttercup or something really hard to get rid of, that's really the option to try to eradicate those things out of turf. And I would, again, if I'm spot spraying in certain areas, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to mix up a tank of brush killer and cover my entire grass when I just had to spray here, there, here, and there to take care of the, of the hard to do weeds. So the first area there is, like I mentioned, lawns, landscape beds. You know, same idea. I've got to be more careful uh, as with the uh, probably using a non-selective killer because most folks are going to want to get broadleaf weeds as well as grasses or, or weedy grasses in the beds. So I'm going to get something like burnout or the botanical cleanup, but I'm going to be very careful as I walk through and spray not to get it on the plants in my garden. If I get a little bit of that spray um, on the peony, the azalea, whatever it is, it will get some herbicide damage. It may not kill it, but you'll probably bring a sample in. What's wrong with this? And inevitably, the 20 questions come back to, yep, you probably got a little bit of spray on a couple of the plants that, that you didn't intend to, okay? Um, vegetable and edible garden is huge right now. You know, again, I'm getting a, a natural botanical type spray only, and I'll spot spray very carefully, not get it on the vegetables. And maybe after my seeds have germinated, um, or I've added plugs in my own seedling plants in there and I'm done planting, maybe I, I, I try something like corn gluten and apply that to some of the open areas between the rows that will keep some of those weeds from germinating once it's clean, okay? Um, driveway, gravel, sidewalks, you know, anywhere you don't have, uh, you don't have any plants to worry about, cracks in the driveway, all those spots, you know, that's probably an easy one because we can get burnout, botanical cleanup, something non-selective and just spray those areas and nuke the weeds without having to worry about it getting on uh, plants we want to keep. So great options for that as well, okay? Uh, now, if we get into, um, I'm going to give you kind of a couple of tips here before we show you some slides because I, I, I want you to kind of think about you know, A, what you're using, how you're using it, when you're using it, so we can hopefully, if you go the chemical route, use less, make it more effective and not have to do quite as much work to, to get the results you're looking for. Um, number one, always use products as directed. You know, speaking from the mail, uh, if the bag says apply to 5,000 square feet, it does not work five times better if you apply it to 1,000 square feet. Um, you're gonna end up using uh, more chemical than you need, you're wasting your money and it's really doing no good. So use products as directed always. Don't mix them, more concentrate in liquids, don't apply more granular, um, follow the label and, and you'll be fairly safe on anything. For me, a huge one in my own yard is mark my sprayer. You know, you might have a simple gallon tank sprayer that you can fill up, go out, do a little spraying here and there in the driveway or wherever it is. Um, I have two in my garage and one is used for plants and one is used to kill plants. So right, right on there, Sharpie, herbicide, weed killer, whatever you want. I would never take a chance of having a, one sprayer that I use to go spray for my roses and vegetables and other things with natural product. Then I put weed killer in it. Even though you rinse it out and clean it, you probably got some residual in there and you will get some herbicide burn. So make sure you have two sprayers one herbicide, one for one for the rest of the garden use, okay? Um, use a product like Turbo is number three there. And Turbo is kind of a fancy, uh, the brand name by Bonide for a spreader sticker. It has a lot of different names. It, it, you don't have to get fancy if you think of a product like Turbo as glue. If I put that in my weed killer in part of the mixture and I spray that on something, it is going to stick to it, glue to it, and you're going to make it much more effective. Whether it's natural, chemical, or anything, it's going to allow you to not spray as much, use less, use less chemical if you're going that route, and glue it to things, especially hard, waxy leaves. You know, you know a lot of leaves we have in our gardens. If I'm trying to kill a clover or an oxalis with those, with those kind of waxy, pubescent leaves, I'm going to have a really hard time to get that chemical to make contact with the foliage and kill the plant. So if I use a surfactant, you can call it a hundred different ways, that spreader sticker is a great way to glue, break down those cell walls and apply that on there and get maximum effectiveness, really with all uh, sprays, but in particular herbicides, okay? Uh, timing is everything is next. 
you know, this is not weed killing is not something we're going to have much luck with doing in the winter. Maybe you've got time. Awesome. But, you know, we have to have plants that are actively growing. If I spray it on the foliage, I want it to soak in, translocate to the root system and kill the plant, whether it's brush, grass, anything. I have to have temperatures up um, and actively growing to get to get 100 percent kill on things. So we're in that time now. You know, once we hit that pretty regular 45 degree mark, uh, we can have luck spraying in our yard, spraying lawns, using these different products um, and, and making them effective as well. Okay. Um, get a, you know, get a hard, all herbicides need a little bit of time to soak on and dry. So we're not going to do this on a rainy day. Uh, we want at least, I, I'd give it four hours. Some things will tell you an hour or two. I would always give it four. If I know it's not going to rain until the night, that's a great day to walk out, get my plant sprayed, let it soak in, let it kill the root system and not have to worry about the rain washing it off. If you spray and it rains an hour later, you're gonna have to go back and, and spray those areas again because we didn't have a chance for it to soak into that that weed and, and do, its, do its damage. Um, you know, we are in spring officially, it doesn't feel like it today, but uh, this is the time of year to get ahead. I mean, I'll speak for me. I like enjoying my summer. I like to lay around, relax, do some fun plant projects in the yard, spend time with my kids, play some golf maybe. Um, and I don't want to weed all the time. So if I get done in spring here and I don't allow these little creatures to go to seed and give me more and more, I'll have a lot less problems when we get to summer. So always try to get a head start in spring. This is, <laughs> this is the time, you know, when you can get a little bit of spraying done, do some pulling, whatever your thing is, and not let them go to seed. I'm going to have a lot of, a lot less work to do when it gets to summer. Excuse me. Now, the next one on there, you know, maximize your foliage to absorb spray. This is kind of speaking as a retailer doing this for 30 years. More people come in this time of year and go out and cut down their blackberries. Whatever it is you're trying to kill, mow the lawn, and then come and say, well, how do I kill my weeds? I want the most foliage I can have to spray on to get the most uh, product in there to kill the root system. So don't ever cut it back and then spray your blackberry, for example. I would always go out there and spraying. Right now, they're pushing out growth and they're coming. This is the perfect time to leave those foliage on there, get the brush killer applied, soak it down. It's moving to the root system very quickly in spring, and I'll probably get 100% death if I try if I cut it back and I've got very little leaves left, I'm not going to be able to get as much of that brush killer into the blackberry to kill it. So maximize your foliage on all of it. I want as much as I can to get that product on there and soak it down and kill the root system as well. I, I wrote on there, consider brushing versus spraying. You know, when I do have to go to one of my neighbors and keep the morning glory from coming through the fence or this coming through or that, um, I do brush some chemical herbicide and I will not spray it in my yard because again, I don't want to get it on everything. I don't want it in the soil. A lot of times I'll just take a little paint can, you know, a jug, mix it according to the directions, get a brush or a dabber and go out there and just paint it on the horsetail, paint it on the blackberry, dab some on the little morning glory as it's coming out of the soil. Um, you'll get enough on there that it'll do some damage and get the roots. You may have to do it a couple times but it's not letting me go out and spray everything because I'll tell you right now, the human eye can see quite a bit, but you cannot see spray as it volatizes. And if you think you're getting it on that plant, I can promise you little drip, little droplets and mist is coming off the ground and getting on something that you probably don't want to spray. Yes, if I've got an empty blank canvas, you know, a bank, a new guard, whatever, and I'm trying to get rid of everything, absolutely get the sprayer out and do your thing but maybe in the garden, sometimes brushing on uh, here and there or dabbing it on some plants might be a little safer for you, okay? Uh, reapply is needed. You know, always go back and look in a week or two. <clears throat> Did that weed shrivel down? Does it look like I have death? Um, you'll chuckle living up around here with blackberry. Yeah, you may have gotten most of it, but I can promise you probably a couple pieces are gonna wanna try to come back off the root system. So always go back in a week or two and just check, did I get everything? Do I need to do one more little quick addition to spray that a second time? Uh, you know, you may have a dandelion that you've left alone for a decade. It's got a taproot the size of two carrots and 
might not get it with a simple quick spray in the lawn. I might have to go back and get that a second time. So always go back and check and, and get it a second if you need it. Okay. Um, useful tools. You know, I enjoy crawling around on my kneeling pad as much as anybody. So I do a lot of hand weeding and picking here and there. Um, I haven't had to do a lot because I mulch like the next one we're going to talk about. But if you're going to get a tool, um, you know, there's a lot of great little handy inventions that man's come up with. You know, the fingers work great. A little trowel works great. Um, hula, hula ho is one of the best. If you haven't tried a hula ho, we've got short handle ones and long handle ones if you want to stand upright. Um, that's a great way to get a lot of real uh, easy weeds here in spring. The soil's moist. It's usually pretty loose. Uh, you can pop those right out pretty easy with the hula ho um, and get those picked up and, and be done with it as well. Uh, you heard me mention mulch real quick. Um, you know, I'll tell you, for me, um, the years I mulch, I have minimal weeds to take care of. I mulched my yard real heavy with compost last spring. I still hardly have anything coming up. I'm going to have to go get a few here on my days off this week so they don't go to seed because I, I try to I try to practice what I preach. But uh, but it, mulch is a great way. If you haven't mulched, you know, clean an area, mulch it, you'll have a lot less weeds. And ones that do maybe come are really easy to pull if you've got a nice, fresh a layer of mulch on there, bark, compost, whatever your your favorite thing is, uh, pulls out very easy and helps build your soil too. So uh, sometimes if you mulch real heavy, you know, you may get some weeds controlled that way. You know, you, if you get down there in the three, four inches of mulch without burying your plants, you probably will suppress some of those uh, real easy weeds that are already existing in there as well. Okay. Uh, last one on there, you know, newspaper, cardboard, burlap, you know, if you're going to go organic, don't want to spray, you know, that may be some options to lay lay some paper out, cardboard, stack it, um, and cover an area with some sheet mulch um, that might keep the weeds suppressed. It allows moisture in. It still breathes, so we're not killing our soil, uh, but it would help control them in an area so you can go back and plant there as well. Um, never, ever do plastic. That's the one thing. Weed fabric, if you like to deal with weed fabric, I'll leave that up to you. Um, plastic is one you want to avoid. If I put plastic on an area, I have no moisture coming in, none coming out. You're going to kill all your microbes and your soil is dead. So never, ever do plastic. Um, it, it, weed fabric would be the option kind of like that that should last you for a while. Okay. Now I'm going to show some slides here a sec. I just wanted to mention a couple more things. Um, so if you have a weed in your yard. Again, we'll get to questions here at the end of the slideshow, but always send a picture, bring down a sample. You know, we'll do the best we can. Um, the show I'm going to show you, I picked out 20 most common things that I see and get questions about. Um, there is hundreds of weeds that possibly could be in your, in your garden. So if you're wondering what it is, send a picture, bring a sample. There's some great resources online. The Pacific Northwest Weed Handbook's a great, great one you can look at. Uh, master gardeners, a lot of times I uh, have staff on, you can email too as well if you're curious about kind of IDing your, your different weeds. Um, so those are kind of some options. Um, keep in mind, you know, kind of the two basic categories of weeds that we're going to look at in the slides here. You know, I would just simply call them herbaceous, things that are kind of soft, that come up, they go away. And then we have woody things that are going to be much harder to get rid of. Think the blackberry. Uh, shrubs we may not want, whatever. Things that are hard stem and woody are going to need maybe a second spray or a little bit different uh, product to apply to them to kill them. Herbaceous weeds probably pull a little bit easier, maybe a little bit easier to spray as well, okay? So give me one second here, and I'm going to share my screen, and we'll look at a few pictures, okay? Okay, so there's... There's me, if you didn't catch my name at the beginning. And we'll look at a few things that I tend to see around. So this is what we call bed straw. Um, I've had it in my yard a little bit. It kind of grows like a tangly, clingy, sticky vine. If you if you know what bed straw is, you'll kind of chuckle because it, it, it's kind of sticky, like it's covered sugar. It'll stick to your pants, your clothes, your, your glove. And when those little white flowers are done, they get those little spurred seed heads and I remember last time I pulled a couple off my bank that's not even really in my yard, I came back out and had about 50 of them stuck to my glove. There, it's an easy way for that little guy to transport around your yard. 
So bed straw is one that's coming up right now in spring. You'll recognize that leaf and it grows very quickly and will kind of vine itself and climb on just about anything. So a uh, very easy one to spray for with a number of different products, uh, but certainly one I'd keep an eye out. A plantain, uh, I get that sometimes more on the driveway, you know, maybe the areas they don't need a lot, they have a pretty good tap root on them, so they don't need a lot of water. Uh, but again, the seed is always the key. You get that flat little rosette of foliage, and then we have the seeds come up, and that's what I wanna make sure either A, I pull it, or B, I get that sprayed uh, with something so I can kill it before it goes to seed. If I let that little creature there go to seed, if we had an hour, we could count the number of seeds and all those little stocks there, and you'd probably have about a thousand of them for the one you started with. A buttercup is a huge one. We I get asked about all the time up here, whether it's in the lawn, the landscape bed. Um, you know, this is going to be a tough one to kill with something natural, to be brutally honest with you. Uh, buttercup is a little creature that kind of reroots itself, and you end up with a mass of running plants. Always have the yellow flower. There's a few different species of it around here in our gardens, even though it doesn't belong. Uh, lawn herbicides work very well. You know, if I get uh, something honestly like brush killer and use it in my turf, I spot spray areas where I have where I have buttercup growing. I'll nuke the buttercup and I won't hurt the grass. Um, I'm lucky enough as I wish I had wood to knock out. I don't have it in my lawn, so I haven't tried it on my natural ironweed killer. I'm kind of curious if it would nuke it. I think it would knock it down, but I have a feeling I'd have to get it a couple times to win. But buttercup's one you want to get here in spring before it has a chance to go. If you let it run rampant in the wet soil right now, it is going to go everywhere and you'll have more and more and more. Um, if it's in the garden, you know, again, very carefully spray or dab or brush it on uh, with a with a, any kind of herbicide and you should be able to get get the buttercup taken care of as well. Our favorite dandelions, you know, this is one of the ones I, I know some people like dandelion leaves in their salads and all kinds of things. So I'm not telling you I have to get rid of them. I have some neighbors that love them in their lawn and think they look pretty, which is fine. Um, but if you don't want dandelion, again, they're just the, the foliage right now. We don't have any flowers up just yet. But you know dandelions, if I let that yellow flower mature, I've got that globe of seeds and it's gonna blow in the wind and I'm gonna have about a thousand more. So get them sprayed here in spring in the lawn or pull them out of the beds or, or quick spray before they have a chance to go to seed. By uh, English Ivy, I found that great picture out in our native woods because I, I know a lot of people still wanna plant ivy in your yard. Uh, we do not sell English Ivy. I wish nobody sells, nobody sold it. Uh, it is on the state's noxious weed list. Um, our fine cities around here are trying to eradicate it from our parks and native woods. Um, ivy will keep growing and will never stop. So my issue is this in the forest. You know, you may like it in your yard on a bank, but you live near Greenbelt or let it keep going. It'll cover whatever you tell it not to cover. And ivy is a woody weed. That's going to be a little tougher to get rid of. And if you know ivy, I've got that thick, waxy foliage which I would absolutely use that turbo on to get my herbicide to stick to it. Um, it's a really hard one to pull. I've tried. Yes, you can win if you keep up on it, um, but I would really recommend spraying if you're trying to keep ivy out of your yard or get rid of it. Uh, do it do it here in spring and get it sprayed with something like the brush killer um, and get it, get it gone. Because if, again, that picture to me speaks volumes. If you let that go. It's going to cover everything in your in your property at, at some point. A fireweed uh, is one my neighbor lets grow across the street because she thinks it has a pretty flower, and of course it does. Um, but it's one that, again, goes to seed and keeps coming. I'm pulling it all the time. Little spots here in my broccoli in front of my house and in my garden from her seeds blowing across the street. Um, so fireweed is one, again, we would try to keep controlled. I don't get pretty tall three, four feet as we get into summer and it seeds very quickly. Um, so A, sometimes you can pull it pretty easily. Be real careful because a lot of times you think you pulled it. That one plant had seven more attached to it and those are still on the ground. Uh, so sometimes if you really want to be done with it, uh, give it a spray and you'll you'll win with any of the non-selective herbicides. Uh, blackberry is another one, kind of just like the ivy. 
Um, you know, I love blackberry pie. I love blackberry milkshakes. I love blackberry everything. So this, I'm not talking about blackberries that we would grow in our garden. Uh, this is frankly the blackberries we would see growing on the roadsides, the ditches, uh, the ravines. And frankly, it is not native blackberry. This is Himalayan blackberry. It doesn't even belong in the Pacific Northwest. So um, again, a perfect example of one man's treasure, another one's trash. If you like the blackberries and you like picking them, I'm not telling you to go home and get them. But <clears throat> if you leave blackberries unchecked, the canes arch over, reroot and reroot and reroot, and it will cover anything that you let it cover. Um, if you're going to spray it, I mentioned this already, spray it early in the spring. You got foliage, you got all that growth pushing up right now. Get the brush killer on it, get it stuck to it, and try to kill the root system so we don't have to don't have to continue to fight it all year. Okay. Uh, horsetail. This is another one we get asked a lot about, whether it's in the garden um, or on the lawn. Um, horsetail loves wet soil. So yes, in our western Washington gardens, we got plenty of rain. It uh, doesn't mind clay. The roots go about halfway to China. Not really, but uh, they're quite a ways down. You're not going to be able to pull a horsetail. Um, you think you did, but you, there's no way you're going to get the root system unless you got a backhoe and you can dig up and sift through and pull it all apart, which is going to take forever. Um, so horsetail is one I would absolutely brush uh, a brush killer on it or use a non-selective herbicide to try to get it here in spring. Kind of looks like little asparagus spears coming out of the soil right now. Um, a, it probably is going to tell you that you've got some clay or some water retention issues down there. It's not ever going to grow much in dry soil. Um, and B, get it taken care of because horsetail is one that will just keep coming. Um, it's one that, that I see quite a bit. A uh, lamium, I tried to find a picture where you could kind of see if this is growing in somebody's lawn. Um, you know, lamium's a little ground cover. It, it's the nettle family. Some people call it creeping nettle. Uh, we certainly have ornamental ones that we sell here as ground covers that belong in the garden. Um, I would always check them yearly and make sure they're not encroaching into other areas that you don't want them to or into the lawn, especially. Um, and B, if you end up with the native lamiums, um, you know, get them sprayed in the turf. You don't have to get murder, death, kill to kill lamium. That's kind of a soft tissue one. Uh, we could use weed beater FE or any of the mild chemical sprays and just spot spray that in our turf and not have to let it go to seed here. Uh, morning glory is another one. Um, you know, it kind of chuckle because everybody sells morning glory seeds. Um, you know, those are annual morning glory. They don't come back. So that's one that you won't have to worry about creating a nuisance long term. But kind of these weedy morning glories, typically white flower, sometimes different color, but white mainly. Um, it will keep coming and take over whatever you have. It'll cover a wall, a shrub. Um, this is one that I fight coming off again, a bank of city property into my backyard. Um, so I'm always out in the spring uh, and trying to paint some on the little leaves as I see them come out so that it gets down and kills the root system. This is another one, massive root system intertwined underneath mulch, the soil everywhere. I doubt you're going to be able to dig it up and get all the roots. I would for sure let the foliage come out this time of year, get some green leaves that I can get that spray on and you will win and, and get the root system killed. Uh, nightshade's another one, kind of like morning glory. Um, you know, this is poisonous, A, the berries are, so we gotta be careful with that with kids and everything else. But nightshade's another one. If you let this go unchecked, it'll twine up and cover fences and shrubs and wherever you let it go, uh, it will get woody down the road. So try to notice that flower could be white, could be a couple different colors as well, different species of nightshade, but we would want to get that sprayed and controlled because what you do not want that, again, take it over your yard here. Um, I want to be very clear on this geranium because if you looked, if you're ever curious in the state of Washington, um, years ago, I was involved with the Noxious, Noxious Weed Board or Noxious Weed Control Board where we were looking at plants that we did not want to let take over native areas, hiking areas, trails that gardeners use, frankly, sometimes in their yards. Um, this is not perennial geranium. This is not something you would find in a nursery like Sunnyside. Um, this is a geranium that does not belong here. It's a particular species of geranium that we are trying to get rid of. If you've got a woodsy yard, 
Um, look up the Robert, R Robert's geranium um, and some of these ones that are on the noxious weed list and try to help out, you know, the environment and get rid of them. Dig them up. You're not going to be able to pull this one. It gets a lot of fibrous root system again, typically in shade. You've got moisture. You've got Western Washington, um, and you might have that geranium going. So make sure we get that pulled um, or sprayed to get rid of it. You don't want that to take over your green belts or kind of native areas. Oxalis is one of my favorites. This little creature and I have a, a personal battle going. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, Oxalis, and actually it's kind of funny because you can see the ivy right behind there. I took that picture at my house years ago, <laughs> coming off a rock. Um, you know, Oxalis is one that's popping up right now. And there's green leafed Oxalis, there's purple leafed Oxalis. You will see it very flat. It's, a, it's flat to the ground. It doesn't usually get much height to it. And that's tucked in grass areas, which we would use again, a selective herbicide that would kill that plant and not hurt my turf. If you have it in landscape beds, then I get it uh, maybe a different product. You know, I'm real careful not to get it on plants I want to keep. Oxalis has a nice little tap root. So, you know, I mentioned the hula ho, a great tool that I use at my house. If I go along and hula ho oxalis, you're just chopping off the tap root and it's going to come right back up. I'll be honest with you. Um, you should get a trowel, is what I do, crawl around real quick in spring and just pop those clumps up before they flower, before they go to seed, and you will win. If I let that little cute yellow flower uh, turn into a seed capsule and I walk by and I touch it, it explodes, and I got a hundred of them that'll start coming up in two weeks. So, so try to get that one as a really good spring one to get early, okay? A red sorrel is another one I watch for on my banks. Um, it's it's kind of hard in that picture to tell. It does get a kind of a seedy reddish brown flower on it as we go through the season. I'm sure you may recognize that plant. The telltale sign of the sorrel is it's all underground. So if I have a little clump of that up and then another clump and another clump and another clump and I grab a trowel and I start popping those up, I'm gonna have real rubbery kind of reddish brown roots that are interconnecting all of these plants together. It's not that I have a thousand of them. I have one monster plant that is going to keep spreading and spreading and spreading until I spray it or pull it up and tell it not to. Um, I spent some time years ago on my bank popping trailers of this up and finding all the roots and getting rid of it and I won. Um, I haven't had much come back. Again, I'll knock on wood. Um, but that's one you want to watch for because it will grow in and amongst ground covers and everything else um, and end up taking over an area pretty, pretty, pretty well. Shot weed or pop weed. That's everybody's favorite here in our, uh, in our area here in the last month. Uh, pop weed's popping everywhere right now. It's got a nice white flower on it. Again, you let it harden into a seed capsule. You can almost hear it pop when you pull it and the seeds go flying everywhere. So this is one very easy to pull Use a hula ho. You can get these out. You don't have seeds. You're going to win. If you let that go to seed, you're going to have one billion of them uh, as we get through springtime. So go through and pop them out real quick. They're easy to pull, especially on a nice mulched yard. Only take you a few minutes um, or get them sprayed again real quick. Those are easy to spray in lawns or in beds. Something even mild like the Weed Beater FE would be fine. You don't have to get chemical for, for pop weed. That's a real soft one. A speed well or Veronica, um, I don't get it much in my beds as much as I do a little bit in the in the turf areas. Again, very soft, a herbaceous type weed, very easy to kill with a, with a natural weed killer like Weed Beater FE. It's always going to have that whitish to kind of light blue flower. Um, it's not the kind of speed wheel you would buy at a nursery. This is a little different one. Um, and it just spreads again flat on the ground amongst the grass blades. If we let the patch get big, it perhaps will choke out an area of turf down the road. So springtime, I can get it sprayed or pulled. I'm not going to have the issues down the road. Uh, thistles one, um, you know, if you, especially if you live out of town here a little ways and you, you know, green belts, um, a lot of the thistles that are not native here, um, you can see by that, they're thorny, they're nasty and they get a whole lot of seeds on one of those little flower pods. So again, this is the time of year as I see those come out in my pasture, my turf area, against my garden, wherever it is, 
um, that I can spray those and kill the root system at all. If I let that go for the year, that one thistle became a hundred and a thousand and it's going to naturalize um, into, a, into a large patch. A vetch, um, you probably recognize I found a great picture in lawn there. Um, I don't fight it in my lawn quite as much. I fight this kind of growing amongst sedums and uh, sun roses and little perennials and some of my rockery. Um, you know, vetch is another one of those things. If, if you like vetch, I'm not telling you to go spray it. Um, we use it as a cover crop. I planted it in my vegetable garden in the fall, so it covered my vegetable garden and then turned it into green manure in the springtime. Um, I'm talking about areas where you don't want it to grow in the garden. Um, if I leave vetch alone, it again goes to seed pretty quickly and kind of tangles and twines and winds itself around anything. Um, so watching it this time of year, I went out a couple weeks ago, found three or four stragglers that I missed last year and got them pulled out of my front. Hopefully I won't have much, much left to do the rest of the year with the vetch. White clover, you know, again, a lot of people going to, to clovers and lawns and adding clover. If that's your thing, great. You know, what? more power to you. Um, I'm a little OCD in my lawn and I don't want clover growing. Um, so I'm trying to spray that. Um, clover's got a very waxy, hard to kill leaf. Typical herbicides don't soak in and get that. I have to use something like turbo and sometimes you have to go to the mild chemical spray versus something natural. If I just spot spray that patch and I don't let it go to seed, I'm going to win. Um, a lot of times I'll walk around here in spring again in my lawn with a screwdriver or my trowel and very carefully try to pop those little clumps out of the, out of the turf with the tap root before they have a chance to, to propagate and turn into a large patch. There's the wild carrot. This isn't one you can eat, so don't worry about that. Um, this is one I see a little bit around uh, my place in Everett as well. Not so much in the lawn, usually more in the landscape bed. But again, um, if I can watch that in the spring and get that sprayed before it gets the big white flower head on it, I've just got the one to deal with and I'm good to go. I'm not going to have to go back and fix a whole colony as, as that thing reproduces itself. So watch, watch for those as well. Very, very easy one to spray. Okay. So right there is our website, okay? If you want to access the, the handout um, or find information out about us, Nicole does a fabulous job with our website. There's lots of great information on there. And that's our email there. If you want to email me a picture, ask a question, that's a great way to uh, get a hold of us as well these days if you like to email, okay? So I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, I'm just going to say a couple things and we're going to turn it over to questions. So like with all our classes starting today, weed control products are going to be on special 20% off starting today through next Friday. So you got the whole week to come down and shop. That would include the hula hose, all the different products that are listed on your list. Excuse me. All the different questions that are listed on your list on the handout there um, are right here in the store ready to go. So if you need to do some shopping, it's a great time to take take uh, take advantage of the 20% off. Um, I'll be back in two weeks. We have Easter next Sunday. So we, we set up no classes, figuring if folks would want to maybe spend time with the family, do a little yard work, come down, buy some flowers, that kind of thing, and not necessarily have a class. So next week, no class. In two weeks, on April 10th, on Saturday at 10, I'll be doing organic gardening. So we'll go through uh, quite a bit of organic, organic gardening, fertilizer, soils, some products, some herbicides, a little bit of everything uh, that we carry here that's natural and organic uh, for your garden use, okay? Then I'd say happy Easter, everybody, instead of happy Easter, but happy Easter early here because uh, the Easter Bunny's coming in one week. I know my, my two boys are ready for jelly beans and lots of sugar, so there you go. So with that, um, I appreciate you joining us today. I'm going to turn it over to Nicole. We'll see if we got any questions. Oh, we sure do. Oh, sure do. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so we've had a lot of questions about home remedies or, you know, natural things. Um, can you talk a little bit about that for us? Well, um, I'm going to leave it up to you and the internet. I'm not going to get into all the different you know, potions of this and that that I've read about and found about. If you want to try them, more power to you. If somebody's recommending it for this or that, um, it's certainly worth a try. Um, vinegar is probably one you're you're talking about. Yes, that does make a pretty good uh, blackberry killer in particular. 
Uh, but again, if I spray it on everything, I'm changing my soil chemistry a little bit. So be careful uh, how much and how often to use things like that. Um, there's a lot of great home remedies. Um, I'll just leave it at that. If, if you found a website you trust and you like, um, I've kind of stuck with the Weed Beater FE in my own yard. That's something natural. And I use the botanical cleanup um, out in my gravel driveway, you know, perimeter areas, not my garden. And I do some, do some hand pulling as well. So you mentioned uh, specifically vinegar and the soil. There was a question about that. Do you need to be yeah. concerned about it affecting your soil in a negative way? Yeah, I mean, again, it, 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 eventually uh, vinegar is very alkaline and you're, you're counterbalancing the acidity of our typical uh, soils here. Um, again, if I take a vinegar out, we, you know, years ago I used to carry a, a natural weed control blackberry brush killer that was literally vinegar, just put it in a different jug and labeled differently for, for gardeners. Um, I don't have a problem with you using it. Just again, the timing, you know, I might wait just a week or two when I've got all that growth up and I can get the most I can soaked into that. You're probably going to get the root system a little better. I think you're going to probably have to do it twice, to be honest, and just be real careful not to get it on anything you want to keep. If I'm spraying a, you know, empty bank and I got a clean slate, great. That might be a good choice. But I don't know that I would mix up the vinegar and walk around through my yard and try to spray that in between roadies and azaleas and perennials and things, to be honest. What about some pet safe or pet friendly products? Yep. Um, you know, again, whether we're talking about chemical, organic, natural, all the different things, if, if you spray it onto a weed, a, a shrub, whatever you're trying to kill and you let it dry on, you're fine. Okay, the systemic type weed killers, which again, we don't carry, yes, I'm gonna have that in my soil. I'd be real careful around edibles, vegetables, frankly, anything long-term. But if I'm just using a, a topical spray, whether it's chemical or natural, as long as I have it dried on, I'm fine to have my pets and my kids run out. The lawn, I would try to stay really natural as much as you can. Or again, I sprayed this morning, you know, sorry, you know, Fido, whatever your dog's name is, you can't go out and run around the grass this morning. I have to let that dry on. Once it's soaked in, you're fine as well. And how long is roughly a good time to wait in order for it to dry to make sure it is safe before? But, you know, most, most all the products will give you, you know, rain fast in one hour, two hour, whatever it is. I said this at the beginning, I would always say four hours myself. You know, we're not super sunny today and yes, it hasn't rained. I think it will at some point today. Probably not the best day to go out, but say tomorrow, the weather looks beautiful and sunshine all day. If you go out spray in the morning, sun comes up, dries it on, you know, that afternoon, you're, you could have, have running around the yard again. You'd be fine. So can you give us some product options, ones that are, say, safe to use around edibles, like you mentioned, yep. or, you know, if people live by a water source, a lake or yep. a pond, that it's okay to well, use here, Let that? me jump up and I'll show you a couple bottles. How's that? Cool. So if I go, remember at the beginning, if you were here, I'd make the answer and I'd raise the hand. Who knows the answer to this? But we started by talking about selective and non-selective weed killers. So there is my selective weed killer, Weed Beater FE. If you come in here and you look at Bonide, you see the brown shoulder, we call it on the label. If you see any product in the store here that has that brown label section, that designates it as something natural, non-chemical. So this is natural iron that I can walk around my lawn and spot spray dandelion and popweed and whatever else I want to and not hurt my grass, okay? So that, that's your natural option for turf areas. If I get in <clears throat> to vegetable garden in particular, I want that. I want botanical cleanup by bonite. Again, you can see the brown natural uh, designation on there. This is something I can use safe around a vegetable, edible, berry, whatever area, doesn't hurt the soil, doesn't absorb into the plants I don't want, just keep it off the foliage of things you don't want to kill. And then we have burnout. I just got the jugs in because people don't need a lot of this. We have concentrate as well, but this is a little gallon I could keep in my garage, pop the sprayer out, go spray 12 weeds in my driveway and be done with it. Put it back in the garage and bring it out next time. But burnout is, again, a non-selective, so I would kill 
uh, all weeds, including grasses as well, so that I can use in gravel, driveway, sidewalk, whatever other situations you have as well. And then the last thing, I won't grab the bag. Well, actually, I'll grab it here so you can see. But this is, that's corn gluten, okay? It's called Weed Prevention Plus. Uh, some people use that on their lawn. Um, I use organic lawn food and don't use that in my turf myself. But when I, when I composted my whole yard last year, guess what went underneath everything? And then I mulched on top of it. When corn gluten dissolves, like all pre-emergence, it makes a little film on the soil. And for some reason, or, it's all organic corn gluten is a great barrier for a lot of weeds to germinate and grow through. So again, I have existing weeds, not going to do you a bit of good. Um, but if I have an area that's clean or I want to keep it that way, the corn gluten may be an excellent uh, organic pre-emergent for you. I'll warn you, um, it's, I wish I could change the fact, but it's not the cheapest thing in the world. You're looking at about 50 bucks for a big bag of that. And you can thank biodiesel for that. We're not trying to rob anybody, but since biodiesel came out a few years ago, most of the raw corn gluten goes into the biodiesel uh, industry. And now the price of corn gluten, I think 10 years ago, those bags were $20. And all of a sudden the last five years, it really has been climbing. It's a great product um, and it will help. It's not a permanent solution, but if you did that in spring, like I said earlier, sometimes I'll do it in the fall if I do some mulching, if an area is clean, it will really help keep it that way. That weed beater FE that you showed us, does that by any chance repel slugs as well? Does not. Yeah, the, the weed beater FE is all about herbicides. So again, it will kill a lot of lawn weeds. It doesn't hurt kill grasses. I want to make sure that that's clear. We don't hurt turf or weed grasses. And I think the added benefit of it, if you were at the lawn class, you know, this is the time of year for moss. And the other thing with anything with iron, uh, will control moss as well the natural way with that iron in there without having to go spray anything else. Be real careful if you're getting in the, the habit of using Weed Beater FE, you would not put that on your sidewalk and the cracks of the driveway, anywhere like that, because that iron will stain. You'll end up with the orangey uh, stain on some of those hard surfaces. Um, what about if you did use kind of a a tougher product, you know, brush killer or something that wasn't necessarily, um, you know, friendly for some of the other plants. How long can you, or should you wait until you plant say veggies or can you ever use it around those types of things after? Well, um, it, it's, that's going to be a hard question for me to answer because I don't know what product you use, but let, let me just guess a couple things. So glyphosate, Roundup, is the number one thing that was used worldwide going back for decades. And now it's banned from Europe. It should be banned from this country here pretty quick. Um, they're finding out all kinds of cancer, you know, this and that and the rest. Yes, I would never, ever use that around my vegetable garden or anything edible, first of all. But if I did still use it, it doesn't have soil residual. Um, so if I spray that on there, I get it on my skin, my hands. Yeah, that's not good. But if I get it in the soil, it doesn't have any residual. So yes, I could go back and plant that area and not worry about it, all my plants dying or my soil being contaminated. Um, if you had something like a vegetation killer, I, you know, I'm trying to think of all the names I used to see years ago, like Noxol, Ortho has a bunch of different things you can probably see at Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, if it says kills on contact and prevents growth for up to a year, that's the stuff that I would really worry about myself because now I've got something systemic in the soil structure that is inevitably going to get to the groundwater, the stream, the lake, the wetland, the sound, the ocean, all the rest of it. So you mentioned before um, about using mulch to help kind of keep weeds down. What's your preferred yep. um, mulch? Is it, you know, wood chips, uh, bark? Um, I, you know, what do you suggest? Well, I, I'm a total 100% compost guy. I mean, that's just me. Um, yes, it's more expensive. I'm not telling you, you got to go buy compost there's other options wood chips is a great one uh, we use a lot of wood chips around our property here to be honest with you it does a great job um, bark you know maybe the hybrid one that I used to use before I, I just used pure compost last year which did cost me a pretty penny but it looked beautiful um, is black bark you know that's kind of the the one in between that for years I use myself it's a little harder to find but you know, again, it's, it's just a personal taste thing. If you like bark, awesome. It, it's your yard. 
I don't like that brownie, ready, slivery bark look. It's just me. Um, is it great mulch? Absolutely. It's not going to hurt anything at all. Um, the compost to me is already degraded bark. It's ready to go. It's adding nutrients. It's protecting my soil. It's making my plants happy. Um, the bark, if you use bark or wood chips on the garden itself, make sure you just put a big heavy dose of a good organic fertilizer underneath that before you put mulch down because the, the wood as it degrades takes almost all the nitrogen out of your soil as that decomposes over time. I used to tell people, all right, make it easy. Go buy a bag of organic lawn food. It's got a little more nitrogen in it. Broadcast that over that bed, then put your three, four inches of bark or wood chips or whatever down on top. <clears throat> Plants will still be happy. That mulch will take some of that fertilizer off the soil surface level, the lawn food, and not take it out of your plants. So we've got a lot of questions about specific weeds and the exact product you would use. So let's jump into that a little bit before we kind of go back yep. to the picture stuff. Um, Japanese knotweed. <laughs> oh, I feel for you if you've got that. Um, you're going to have to get a brush killer, to be honest with you. I do not think you're going to be able to get that with the typical herbicide. I think you're heading for brush killer. If it's in the garden, um, I would try the, the can, painting it on the stems here and there to get it out of there. Um, I, if it's an open area, great. Get brush killer and spray it on. Um, I don't think you're going to get it with the natural um, non-selective herbicide. If you're going to try, I would get the burnout. Try it if you don't want to use chemical. I think you're going to have to get it two, three times here, a couple weeks apart if you're going to, going to win. Poison oak. Yeah. Um, we don't see that as much here, but that's another woody one that I would get um, something on the heavier duty side. That's a There's a picture of poison oak right on the brush killer label. Um, if I use the, the natural options, the botanical cleanup or the burnout, I think you probably would win, but again, it's going to be a couple more applications. And I know you talked about Morning Glory, but what product uh, would you use for that? Well, again, I, being this was not in my yard, so it's outside my fence. So I don't, I don't call it my yard. But um, I use regular brush killer when I when I eradicated mine. And again, I didn't put it in a can and fumigate the entire bank. There wasn't a need. I wanted the the clover, the grass, and some of the natural stuff to stay. I just was tired of the morning glory coming through my fence and popping up on all my plants. So when I came up in spring, I really hit it last year and I got nothing left. I went along and painted or dabbed it on the leaves as I saw those coming out of the ground. I saw the shrivel and then killed, killed the root system. Thistles. Yep, thistles is another one. Uh, it's a little, it's kind of the, not really woody, but yet it is. If you've got old thistle, that, that thing's a monster. Um, any of the brush killers will be listed for the Canadian thistle. Um, and I think if you've got it in spring here, you could use the two natural options. Don't let it get that thick tree trunk, you know, and wait till July before you do this. If you were out there in April when it's still growing actively and a little softer, I think you could get kill on that with the burnout as well. What about liverwort? Yeah, that's a really tough one, and I don't have an answer for you on that. That is one right now. There's there's some projects and research going down on. Um, a, they're not sure where it came from. It's not really a plant. It's not really a moss. Um, I scrape that off with the hula ho um, is what I do every single spring before it has a chance to propagate. If it's wet and it's shade, um, you usually will get a little bit of that liverwort starting out. Um, I would try to scrape it off because I don't think pulling it, you're going to get it all. But if you can scrape that off or mulch really heavy in those areas, you'll tend to bury it and it, it won't be back. Um, side question. Did you bring in a hula ho in there? Is there one that I you did. could show us? Yeah. It's kind of fun. What's their, their tagline is it's the the hula ho, the hole that wiggles because it moves here a little bit. You can see the end. So this is the short handled one. I can drag this along if I'm on my kneeler and do a little bit of fine weeding or we've got the tall long handled version here. Same thing. If I get that into my soil a couple inches, it just scrapes all that surface right off. Moss, the liverwort, 
Um, if it's a weed that has a tap root, like I mentioned earlier, you probably aren't going to get the whole thing because it's not going to pull it up, but you'll clear the surface for sure and then allow you to apply mulch and you may win doing that without having to spray. Excellent. Um, what about nettles? How do you take care of those? Uh, that's one again. I, any of the any of the the non-selective herbicides would take care of that. Um, brush killer would probably be the the one of choice because nettle gets pretty rampant. Make sure you put on some body armor if you're doing nettles. You don't want to don't want to get stung. Um, and then there was also one of oh Scotch broom. That's another one, um, you know, we're trying to ban get out of our entire state. The freeways used to be full with it. We're starting to win. Um, I dug, when I had a couple seedlings start in my yard years ago, I got a shovel out and I dug down and tried to get every root and got rid of it. And I didn't have it come back. If you're going to spray, you'll, you'll have to get brush killer on Scotch broom with the turbo. That does not have much leaf to soak into if you know Scotch broom. So I'm going to really try to get that stuck onto the stems and get it in there before it turns yellow uh, flowers and drops seeds all over the place here pretty quick. Um, I know you talked a little bit about this before, but just to recap, clover in the lawn, what do you yep. use to get rid of that? Um, you know, again, I, I, I keep using Weed Beater FE. Um, I have not had the best luck with clover and oxalis with that in my lawn. So I walk around and pop it here in spring and then I don't have to deal with it the rest of the year. Um, if you're not into crawling around, which I don't blame you in getting it out if you're not OCD gardener like me, um, you know, any any of the weed killers that we sell that are chemical for lawn will get clover, use the turbo so it sticks on there. And again, don't do the weed and feed broadcast. I have much less issue if you have a little spray can of it mixed up and you walk around and just spray those individual clover plants, you will shrivel and kill the root system and all. Um, for those that feed birds in their yard and, you know, are really conscious about uh, taking care of the bee population, yep. um, are there things that they need to be mindful of to, to not use or to specifically use or, you know? Well, I, I would say this, um, you know, with the bees, the birds, all of it. I mean, again, the natural stuff is always going to be the better route. If I go the chemical route, um, you won't hurt either of those things as long as I don't spray. You know, don't wait for the clover to go into flower and then go out there and spray it in the middle of the day in a month. You know, you're going to spray bees. You're going to get some of that. If I can get the foliage killed off before it even starts to bloom, the bees are not going to be uh, anywhere nearby. So that's, that's an easy one, the bees. The birds, you know, I have bird feeders all over my place. Um, and again, I, I use only natural stuff. I don't think, um, you know, again, walking out in the morning one morning, uh, maybe after they've done their little worm hunting expedition before sunrise, you get out there and you do a little bit of spraying and spot spraying versus just covering the whole lawn. Um, I think you'll be fine doing that as well. So in terms of uh, spraying and pulling weeds, what order do you want to do this? Do you want to go pull weeds and then spray? Do you spray, wait for them to die, and then pull? What do you do? Um, I, I, would, I would rather have you make a choice. I mean, don't waste your time. If you're going to go pull them, let's get pulling them, you know, and get, get a little gardening workout and have some fun. And you can sit and talk to them and yell at them and curse at them or whatever you want to do. Get them in the yard waste and be done. Then... Maybe a couple come back up in a few weeks and you go spot spray or pull them again. Um, if you're going to spray, spray to me. If you're going to pull them, pull them. You know, I, you know, again, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to garden, but um, I would always try to pull my vegetable garden by hand. You know, if you're doing veggies and you got that, get, get down there and get the weeds pulled real quick and you're done with it for the year. Um, if you're talking about the lawn, get it done early. You won't have as much issue when the stuff goes to seed. Um, just don't wait. Just don't wait so long in the spring. A lot of us have issues with grass in our beds, whether it's a veggie bed or a flower bed. Um, how do you recommend kind of keeping that under control and taking care of it? Well, again, if it, it, it could be poa anna. It could be barnyard grass. I mean, there's a zillion different weedy grasses that just blow in the wind and come in and, and seed themselves all over in gardens or the lawn. Um, that's a tough one to spray. <laughs> in the grass or turf areas because, again, I can't kill one grass and save another, okay? There is one product called Sedge Ender. It is chemical um, for lawns that does take care of 
some of the weedy grasses that you would not want to have and doesn't hurt rye grass or fescue your typical turf grasses so but there's not a natural option for that if i'm going to spray grass weed and non-selective and spray all of it and be real careful not to get it on my vegetable seedlings whatever plant you're spraying around then again we go straight for the cleanup botanical you know that's a vegetable picture right in the front there and letting you know that i can use this safely anywhere in my garden because that's a non-selective one that would kill weeds and grasses, I just can't get it on the plants that I that I want to save. What about for situations when there's weeds, say under uh, you know a tree, a Japanese maple, or under shrubs? Uh, what can you use so you're not affecting the bigger roots underneath? Yep. You know the smaller that's, weeds. You know that that's a great question, and that, that's a perfect example of me where maybe let me grab something to show you here. You know, I've, I've told people for a few years. You know, maybe if I'm in the garden, you know, sometimes, whether again, I use natural, it could be the chemical. Maybe I get a piece of cardboard and I set it up against this plant because I don't want to take the chance of miss getting on the foliage of its neighbor. And I do a quick little spray. Uh, maybe I just get something simple like that, a little trigger sprayer that I can control the spray a lot closer, get right down on and just spray um, right on the, on the weed that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, painting it on would be huge. Um, you know, I'm, again, the stuff I showed you today is not going to kill your soil. It's non-systemic, so it's not going to get in and do damage, but I don't want to physically get the liquid onto the surface root tissue or onto the base of a plant, or I probably will do a little bit of herbicide damage. So maybe it's underneath the azalea, and we don't want to crawl underneath there and, and try to pull them out. Maybe I'm real careful, again, the little can, and I can just dab some on the leaves of a couple here and there without getting a bunch of, of excess liquid into my soil. All of these products that we've been talking about, do they typically last? Like if you don't use them all in one season, are you able to keep yep. them and use them again? Oh yeah, it, it, it'll take years for any of this to break down. As long as you keep it uh, where it doesn't freeze, A, it needs to be kept somewhere that doesn't freeze in the winter. And on the opposite end, I don't think anybody gets to 90 degrees, but you, you'd want to keep it somewhere where it doesn't get super hot. So, um, you know, dark garage on a, on a shelf where I got all mine. It's fine in there year round um, and nothing will ever go bad with it. And the hula ho, do you need to sharpen that every season or how do you maintain and take care of that? Um, it, it usually stays pretty sharp. It's not a razor blade tool. I mean, certainly you could sharpen the edge if you want. I, I've never had to sharpen my hula ho. Um, certainly if it got super dull or you had to cut in, you could run a little file across it or something, but it, 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 that's one you should not have to sharpen. Somebody asked about uh, a mechanical taproot weed puller um, that uses leverage to pull them out. Do you yep. feel like that's worth the time to use or? It works great on dandelions. You know, a few of those, again, those plants that have a little bit longer taproot, absolutely. You'll find like they used to call, I think they still sell them here and there. Grandpa's Weeder was a, a brand name. There's all kinds of things you can get on that soil, kind of grab grab the grabs the fork of the foliage and then kind of pulls it out, taproot and all, especially if it's loose soil. If it's compacted, uh, probably going to be a little tougher to pull it out, but absolutely. Somebody asked if uh, said sedge ender, if it will kill the grass seed that we sell, this um, sun and yeah. shade mix. Do you have yeah, to if, if I you know, again, this is the kind of the vocabulary at the beginning. We stopped out, we started out by talking about pre-emergent and post-emergent. If I apply, if I put anything down that's got any pre-emergent qualities, which said gender would be one for about three months, um, I can't seed. So if I'm going to do this, I would seed my lawn, get all that done, let the grass germinate and grow. Then I can go back and, and use a, a product like that. Um, we don't want to usually do that is a March type spray because if, if we're going to reseed, because I want that grass seed to have a chance to establish. Um, switching gears, somebody asked if they add lime to their soil, will uh, horsetail die out after several years? I, I read years ago something on the internet, someone was talking about gypsum and lime and it will kill. I, I don't think it's going to change horsetail. Yes, horsetail likes acidic soil. Um, the issue with me is if you're going to apply that much lime to change the pH that extravagantly, 
your plants aren't going to be very happy in the ground either. So I, I would say that that might be a little bit of waste of time for you on the line. Gotcha. Um, what about comfrey? You know, again, it's, it's, you know, that's something if I can get it on the foliage, um, that's a pretty easy one to spray as well. I could use botanical cleanup to burn out or certainly go to, to brush killer if I really have to have a big patch of it. What about uh, bamboo, the invasive kind? Yeah, yeah got to use um, brush killer on bamboo. And again, um, just like the blackberry, the ivy, some of this hard to control stuff. Spring is ideal because I want all that new growth as it comes out to get all that chemical down and kill the root system or the bamboo will be back. Um, we talked about using like a mulch or compost to help keep weeds down. Does the compost not promote weed growth because of all the nutrients in it? No, it, it doesn't. I mean, again, the, the, the weed seed has to come from somewhere. And yes, they blow around the wind. I mean, they, these creatures have all kinds of ways to propagate themselves. Um, I just found if I clean an area and mulch it, I have minimal weed growth. And if something does blow in and start, it's very easy to pull out of a loose mulch layer uh, versus having to dig down and get it out of an old old soil layer. Um, the nutrients, you know, it's, it's when you add compost, it's not about adding nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. It's about adding all the other soil chemistry, the microbes, the bacteria, everything to make all plants happy. So it's not fertile. Or don't think of it that way. It's just giving me happier soil. Gotcha. Um, do any of these products we've been talking about today, do they need to be coupled with a spreader or a sticker? Um, it, again, I, I, I'm not going to use the word need because I'll leave that up to you kind of thinking about what we discussed today. And if it's a harder to control one, you know, I want to use less product. You can use that turbo with any spray period, whether I'm spraying a bug, a disease, an herbicide, natural, organic, chemical, it really doesn't matter, it's glue. So I know Bonite in particular, uh, most of their lawn herbicides come with a small portion of that included in the mixture because they want you to be successful. If I spray a, a herbicide and it just runs off and doesn't soak in, then you've wasted your time, you've wasted your money. If I use that glue, I'm gonna stick it to whatever I spray and make it more effective. So. I guess in an indirect way, I'm saying, yes, use it with all of it if you can. Um, I think especially if you're going chemical route because we're going to use less chemical and we're going to make what we do put on more effective. Somebody asked if a dish soap could use be used yep. as a spreader or sticker. Same idea. Dish soap's a great kind of coagulant. Be real careful what brand it is. I'd have to check these days on the list, but I think still Ivory was the one they recommended most because it was clean. Uh, some of the souped up stuff may not work quite as well as the other, but but pure old fashioned dish soap does work very well like that. Um, do you have a recommendation on a good sprayer to use? Uh, you know, I, I've tried quite a few. You, you know, you always pay for what you get. If, if the one thing I would say, if you're going to go the route of purchasing a nicer you know, half gallon, gallon, two gallon, whatever size it is, an actual tank sprayer. Um, you know, if you want to replace it every few years or you don't use it very much, you know, all plastic is fine. But if you're looking to buy one that you want to have forever, as long as you don't break it or step on it, um, get a brass nozzle. That would be the main difference in, is not the tank itself, it's in the applicator. And if I have a brass nozzle, uh, much longer lasting, easier to clean, all the rest of it, um, the plastic one works great. If you're only using it a few times a year, um, plastic one probably works as well too. And it's, it would be quite a bit cheaper. We just had a question pop up about uh, using a little flamethrower on individual weeds. What are your <laughs> thoughts on that? That person gets the gold star because I was waiting for someone to say, bring up fire and torch. I want to burn something. Um, I'll be honest here at Sunnyside, we do a lot of weed burning on our gravel. We're all gravel. Um, we've got the dragon torch and you hook up the barbecue protein. It's kind of fun to walk around and throw fire on everything. Uh, I will say this, be really, really careful. I've had friends, uh, I've heard stories. Um, we just about burnt down a table here a couple years ago. Be real careful with the fire. You're putting flame down and you light something on fire. I've, I've, I've had a buddy lose his garage um, using a weed killer torch along the edge of it, thinking, oh, it'll be fine. 
Um, be real careful, but yes, that is a very effective way uh, to burn all weeds, period. If you've got, I don't think I'd ever use it in my garden, um, but in the driveway, the gravel, back 40, whatever, absolutely, it's fun to throw some fire around. That would be a good option. <laughs> um, back to some specific weeds and how to get rid of them. Somebody said that uh, they have a large bed of chameleon plant. They also have roadies and pieris in that same area. Um, what do you recommend for that? Well, that's going to be a tough one, knowing uh, Hutania chameleon plant. has probably covered everything, I'm guessing, as a ground cover, right? Um, wow. I'd be, I don't think I'd spray no one roadie and azalea so much sh uh, shallow root system. I think you're going to have a tough time getting a spray and just nuking the thing because I bet you're going to get some of that into the roadie azalea. Um, I would opt for painting it here and there. It's going to be a labor of love, just to be honest with you. But if you've got a can of that mixed up um, and walked in there real carefully, <laughs> dabbed it or lightly sprayed it on just the leaves. Don't get it to where it's running off and dripping onto the soil. Um, I, you can get that with a number of the different weed killers, probably even the natural ones uh, as well. Um, somebody was also asking about dog strangling vine and garlic mustard. Yeah. Um, those two, again, if, if, if you can get them sprayed here in the spring, um, not, neither of those are too woody as long as you can get them early before they would go to seed, um, probably a little bit easier. Uh, sometimes with the viney weeds, you know, if it's gotten up into a plant, um, I, you know, A, you're probably not going to go and unwind it and lay it on the ground and spray. I did that with Morning Glory a few years ago and it took quite a while. Um, you know, maybe chop it off so it's severed with what's growing in your plant and then watch it. And as soon as it starts to come back up with fresh leaves, then apply the spray and not have to deal with trying to spray up into a existing plants you, you, that you don't want to hurt. We've covered a lot of ground today. Um, and it's always tricky because sometimes you feel like you've got all this information and then you walk away and you still have more questions pop up. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. We love talking about these things. Um, send us an email, give us a call. If questions pop up that we didn't get to today or things after you leave the class come to your mind. Um, we also record this so that it's a great resource tool for you to go back and reference, um, check out the products again, pause it, write down notes, whatever works for you. We'll post it later today, hopefully, or tomorrow up on our website. It's also on our YouTube channel, so you can sign up for that and then you get notification right away. Um, a really good, valuable resource to just keep coming back to. Um, and as always, we're always here, you know, bottom line. So thanks for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate you hanging with us through all these questions too. We hope you come down and see us sometime this week. Take advantage of the discounts attached to this class, which we talked about, right? Discounts? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we hope to see you back in two weeks after Easter. Happy holidays and thanks again. We'll see y'all later. Thanks everybody. Stay safe.